Yo, what's going on everybody, this is Mystical. Today I am bringing you a guide on macros for WoW PvP and PvE. The goal of this video is to give you enough knowledge about macros and everything you're gonna have to know about it to hopefully make your own, right? Because one of the most confusing parts if you're a new player or even if you're an experienced player is macros. They are super important for any high rated or even low level arena or PvE. So with that said, let's jump right into the video. To see the macro menu, just type dash M and you should see this menu right here. There are quite a few spots. There's a limited amount of spots for macros. They added some more to character specific. So on this right tab, these are character specific only. So none of my other tunes can see these macros. And in the general macros, every other tune you have in your account will see these macros. And the reason why you want to learn macros is because they are but they help you be more efficient pretty much that's pretty much how i think of it you can macro multiple spells together you can make it do some pretty nuanced things that i'm going to talk about so i would say having macros is pretty important especially in pvp because it can help you with targeting things that you don't have to target yourself which is great for example if you don't want to target somebody on your focus you can make a bind to put something on focus and if you're targeting a teammate you can in cap and it'll put your focus target into a paralysis, right? So that's really important. So now I don't have to, especially if you're a healer, obviously DPS want to learn this too, but if you're healing somebody, you don't want to swap to an enemy, cast paralysis on him and then swap back to your teammate. That's very inefficient. What you want to do is you want to keep healing your teammate, keep targeting them, press your macro, right? And then continue healing your target. So that is what this guide's about. Hopefully this is helpful for anyone and let's jump right into all the macros. All right, so I'm going to start with the most basic macro that you can make, and that is just a dash cast macro right here. So hashtag show tooltip just shows what spell you want to show on your action bar, and then you do dash cast for whatever spell you want. So right now, this is going to do, all it's going to do is it's going to show the Kraken Jade Lightning on my action bar, and then cast it, right? So I put that on my bar, I press it, shows Kraken Jade Lightning. That's fantastic. Now, what you can do and what you see a lot of PvPers and PvEers do is they can track cooldowns for a different spell, but still use the same spell. So for the show tooltip, you could use it for any spell. So if I wanted to track leg sweep, right, I would just do hashtag show tooltip leg sweep, and then it would still cast Kraken Jade Lightning. But now my macro updates, right, I can now track leg sweep, but I'll still cast Kraken Jade Lightning. So that's why you'll see a lot of PVPers and PVs, a lot of players will have multiple spells on their bar. That's because it's just easier for them to track cooldowns. The next macro I want to talk about that I mentioned in the intro are focus macros. So this is very, very common in PvP and PvE. You will mostly be using this with CC and interrupts are the two primary uses. You could use it for your damage as well, but for the most part, people are going to be using this for your CC and interrupts. So right here is a simple one. Show tooltip, dash cast at focus spear hand strike. This is the monk interrupt. You can change this for any CC you have, any kind of interrupt you have. If you're a monk, you could use it for paralysis. If you're any other healer, wind shear, if you're shaman, anything like that. This is what you're gonna use it for. And I have this, I believe I have this one set on focus and I'm gonna be targeting this one and then I'll just kick. And you can see I kicked this one right here. And this is really, really a, just a good macro. A lot of people use focus macros. I personally use arena one, two, three macros, but you wanna do, if you do this, is to make a bind for setting a, a target on focus. So go into your key bindings, type in focus, and then you could focus target right here. So this will put a, uh, enemy on focus which is fantastic uh just make a bind for it i don't have a bind i just have other key binds for arena one two three that's why focus macros are so important and again you can do the same thing with crowd control right i can update this to be paralysis right here paralysis save it and again i don't need to update the show tooltip because this is the only spell in here i have this on focus if i'm healing somebody and then I want to CC the healer, for example, I will go for an in cap on this guy, but I'm not targeting him. I'm still targeting my teammate and you put this enemy on focus, which this is what I'm talking about with efficiency. It's just really important. Instead of having to target this guy and then go back to targeting this guy, you don't have to tar swap your targets at all. You just shoot, press your macro and they'll be put in a CC. The next macros I want to talk about are Arena 1, 2, 3 macros. I've mentioned it a few times. It's the same thing as a focus macro, except instead of it being on focus, it's on Arena 
one, two, three enemies. So if I just do S arena and test it, this right here is arena one. You can see arena two and arena three. And if I press my paralysis for arena one, it's gonna use paralysis on this and same with arena two and three. I like, those are the macros that I enjoy. It gives me more flexibility, right? Focus is nice having a focus target macro and that's great. And I do have one for paralysis that I use from time to time, but I like having the flexibility of being able to use paralysis or kick on any of the enemies, not just the one I have on focus. And you can use a combination of both. That's what I do. I think it's great. Just don't go, don't get carried away with it. Just try to focus on one thing at a time, do one macro at a time, and you're gonna do fantastic. As far as paralysis goes, again, CC, kicks, I use it for clash as well for arena one, two, three. So that's really good for interrupts, but that's what people are talking about when they say arena one, two, three macros. It just gives me, in my opinion, more flexibility. I have to do the same thing with grapple weapon as well. So I can disarm anyone on the team if I feel like I have to, right? If there's two team, if there's a team with an enhancement shaman and a fury warrior. And the Fury Warrior, I don't know, isn't CC. I, maybe I want to disarm the Shaman. I have, the, I don't have to swap to my focus target from Warrior to Shaman. I can just disarm the Shaman with my Arena 1-3 macro. And a lot of the times I'll have whoever's casting CC on my focus anyway, so I can see that cast bar. So that's why a lot of the times I like using the Arena 1-3 macros. But that is it for Arena 1-2-3s and focus. Those are the two primary ways you're going to be using your binds. But I want to talk more about little keywords that you're going to want to add to your macros when you're making changes to them. Similar to arena one, two, three macros, there's also party one, two, three macros, and I don't have too many of them, but if you're playing a class that has multiple ways to help your teammates out some utility, I would recommend using probably a, a party one, two, three macros. As far as Mistweaver goes or healers in general, I think dispel one, two, three for party is absolutely crucial. So I have a party one, two right here. So it's just really quick. Again, you don't need to target your teammate to dispel. You could just target somebody, use your dispel macro on the other target, and you don't need to select them at all. I also have the same thing with Tiger's Lust. I think my Tiger's Lust is down here. So if you have freedoms or something like that, if you're Pally, Blessing of Sank, Bop, stuff like that, uh, I have you know my utility as party one, two, three. So you just set the target equal to party one and then party target equal to party two. And if you want to use a, a bind on yourself, you or a macro on yourself, you target equals player. So I can target this dummy right here, use my macro to use Tiger's Lust to myself and never have to target myself at all to press a button. It just gives you more flexibility. You never know which teammate's gonna need the macro or the spell, right? You don't know if there's gonna be a situation where you're gonna want a freedom, your healer, your DPS, you never know, even yourself. So just keep that in mind, any kind of, spells like that, I would probably put into a party one, two, three macro. The next concept that really isn't a macro, but it's just a way to change your macros are modifiers. So these mods allow you to, depending on what modifier you're pressing, will change the spell. So for this one, if I'm holding shift, it's gonna cast vivify. If I hold alt, it's gonna use renewing mist. And if I'm not pressing either, it's gonna use involved mist. And you can see when I add show tooltip, it's gonna change on the action bar. So right now, since I'm not pressing anything, it's gonna show as enveloping mist, which it should if I press the bind, it's envelop mist. If I hold down shift, which is my vivify, it changes spells right here. So if I hold down shift and press the button, it uses my vivify. And if I hold down alt, it changes to renewing mist. So this is a really, again, a very, very good way to organize your spells, save uh, key bindings. This is another good one to save binds. If you ever find yourself in a situation where you're running out of key binds, these are help harm macros. So this is very important. This is a really good macro. A lot of Mistweavers use this. A lot of Shaman uses. I've seen them use Flame Shock and Riptides. Mistweavers do use Crackle and Soothing Mist. So I'm sure every spec has some kind of version of this. But what this does in the name, if you are targeting a teammate that is a helpful teammate, a party member, it will cast the helpful spell on it. If you're targeting an enemy, it's gonna use the harmful spell on them. For example, if you play a monk and you want the help harm macro, I just had it right here. Soothing Mist is gonna be used on your teammates and then Crackling Jade Lightning is gonna be used on any enemies. And if you're targeting, you're not targeting anybody, it's gonna be Soothing Mist. So, and I'll talk about these keywords in a second, but the help is your teammate. Harm is the enemy, and then no dead means you have an actual target exists. Uh, that's what it's going to press on. So I'll show it again. I'm targeting a teammate or you know, a, you know, a friendly player. It's going to use soothing mist or whatever helpful spell you have. And if you have a harmful spell, or if you're targeting the enemy, 
it's going to use the harmful spell. So for monks, it's going to be crackling jade lightning. Again, this is really helpful for kind of helping with your key bindings. If you're running out of space, if you're running out of, you know, key bindings on your mouse, keyboard, it doesn't matter. Or if, even if you just find it easier to just press, this is a great, great tool to have. At cursor macros are also a great macro to have if you find your spec has a few that spells that you need to place on the ground. Monk has that, for example. Uh, as you can see our statue right here. You have to click it and then click it a second time to place it on the ground. What an at cursor macro does is it puts whatever spell you, you need to place down immediately. So if I just spam this, I don't need to press a second time. It just puts it straight on the ground. Same thing with ring of peace. I don't need to click ring of peace and then place it on the ground. I just, wherever my cursor is, Ring of Peace will go. So that's, I like them a lot. It, obviously, if you play Shaman, you probably already know what these are. It, it, it's just faster. That's pretty much all it is. It's efficiency. It's just faster to put on the ground. And those are the two spells on Monk that I've been using. I can't think of many others. Ursula's Vortex on a Druid. You know, stuff like that. Anything you have to place, I always would always do an Act Cursor Macro because they're literally, they're just faster. And they're, they're, in my opinion, I think they're more, they're superior to just cl clicking it two times. Another keyword that you're probably going to want to use, not so much in PvP, but in PvE, I use them a lot, and that is mouse over. So mouse over means wherever your mouse is, it's very similar to cursor macros, where wherever your cursor is, it'll use it. If I mouse over in, uh, a friendly player, it's going to use my spell. So if I mouse over this player, it uses Renewing Mist on them. And if I'm not targeting anybody, it will use Renewing Mist on whoever I'm targeting. So mouse over is really common in PvE. In PvP, I've seen people use mouse over macros for like, banish pets if you're a warlock those are really the only situations where i've seen that happen outside of that you really don't want to use mouse over macros too much just because they take away from your focus on what's going on during the arena match you're too focused on where your cursor is where you're, you're not being paying attention to who's in front of you or what's going on around you so just keep that in mind again if i'm tar again targeting this guy right here but if i mouse over and use my bind here it's going to put renewing mist on this player right here very helpful. I use it a lot in raiding just because there's so many players. I don't want to keep selecting like all 20 other different players. It's just nice to being able to, you know, target whoever needs healing and then, oh, spot healing. I'll put my renewing mist out or I can, you know, vivify as well. Again, any spell will do. You can even use it for for um, harmful spells too, right? You could do the same thing if you wanted to. If you found a situation where you're like, man, I really want to use a mouse over for my... I don't know what do i want paralysis right let's just say i just want to use paralysis for it i can do the same thing so paralysis right here and i'll do the same thing for paralysis right here and this is actually as help right here so i'm going to change this to harm so if i'm targeting if i'm mousing over an enemy this should use paralysis and i shouldn't have to target them at all so i'm targeting this right here but if i want a paralysis right here it works i wouldn't recommend this for pvp too much it kind of takes away from you know your focus on whatever is going on in the match. But if you, uh, I've seen Warlocks do it too. They have, I think it's Mouse Over Agony. I believe it's one of their dots where, you know, they're running, they'll mouse over and use their dot while running. And that's fine too. All right, this is a fun macro. This is a cast sequence macro, and I have very little experience using them. I do not, I have never used a macro for cast sequence, but what it does is when you press the button, it's going to show as a different spell. So for example, the macro that I have set up for cast sequence is for my Thunder Focus T into an envelopment right here. So cast sequence is right now, I'm going to press th Thunder Focus T is what it's gonna show. And then it's going to show Envelope Mist for 15 seconds. And then after 15 seconds, it's going to reset to Thunder Focus T. And then that's the button I can press. I, again, I do not use this very often. I can't think of many situations where you'd use it. Maybe it's good for like a one-shot Swifty macro where you're just mashing one button. That's what a lot of those... Um, those macros that where you just smash and you just kill something that's normally what these are normally it's a cast sequence so i will show you that real quick so i press so this is the bind right here this is the macro it's going to be th my thunder focus t and it's going to show up as envelope mist as my next button uh my next spell to press you can see it's envelope mist and then it goes back to being thunder focus t after 15 seconds so handy macro it's it's good i don't use in pvp or pve i can't think of many scenarios where you would want to press this but maybe again maybe someone has found really good ways to use sequence macros
You can also macro trinkets. So dash use 13, dash use 14. This is what I use for my trinkets. And this refers to the slot number. So slot number 13, dash use 13 is your top trinket. And then dash use 14 is your bottom trinket. This is just so you never ever have to worry about changing your trinkets ever again, right? I've had this macro for years. I never have to worry about where my trinket is. Or, or if I have it equipped or not, because as long as I have my my medallion in the t on the top slot, I never have to worry about my trinket being in the wrong spot ever, right? So that's just what I have for my my trinkets. You could again, you can macro this with spells too, right? If you wanted to trinket and then I don't know dash use thunder focus T, um, you can do that. You can do that. Save it and then this should press. Yep, my thunder focus T and my trinket at the same time, right? Much more efficient. I mean, you would never do it, but. If you wanted to, you know, PVE, if you want to macro a trinket into your burst rotation, that's just what you do. This one's pretty cool. So you can macro the talent loadout and the set that you want to use for wh whatever situation. So for example, I do, th I do PVE in threes, right? If I'm in my PVE set, right? What this macro does is it's going to equip set 3v3. So I named this 3v3. It's going to equip it. And then the loadout name is the name of the talents that you have. So I have PvP 3v3 right here. I'm in testing right now. So if I press this macro right here, what it's going to do is, uh, let me see. What this is going to do is this is going to swap my talents and it's going to swap my equipment set. I also have the equipment set um, first just because you have to cast to get your talents done. So if I press it, it changes my gear and I'm changing my talents right now. And this is just, this is something I do when I just swap from PVP to PVE. You can see now I'm using my 3v3 set and not my test set. I just do this because some, there have been times where I've accidentally used my PVE set <laughs> when I'm like after a keystone, I'm doing some arena. So I always, I, whenever I'm done PVPing or PVEing, I always make sure I just press that button just, <laughs> just so I don't make that mistake. Really good, really handy, especially if you have multiple sets, multiple loadouts. It's just handy to have. Another really important macro is the known command. And this is this is a really good one. This is mostly for choice nodes in your talent tree. And I use this, if you're a monk, for example, I use this on the choice node with Song of Chiji and Ring of Peace, these two right here. So what this does is this will cast Song of Chiji if I know Song of Chiji, or it will use Ring of Peace if I have Ring of Peace learned in my talent tree. Also, I add an at cursor argument, right? We talked about that. With the at cursor for my statue and my Ring of Peace, you could throw it in here with the known command so again i can show you so this is my ring of peace right this is the same just right there on the action bar and if i swap my talents from ring of peace to song of chiji and i apply the changes this right here is going to change right here boom and it changes the song of chiji so i use this a lot for a same with chiji and yulon just so you know you never have to change it or every anything same with the revival and restoral so pretty much any choice node where you feel like you're gonna be swapping often fairly often when you don't want to keep dragging onto your action bar i just use the known command you never have to worry about it just more efficient and i don't really like to you know spend time in the starting room swapping my action bars and dragging onto the action bar there's no point just use the known command and you never have to worry about it ever again This is a very niche command, but I thought I would share. This is the combat command. So this will use the spell if you're in combat, and if you're not in combat, it's not gonna use it. So for example, this is a combat command for drinking in Arena, or even Mythic Plus. You could use it in Mythic Plus. If I'm in combat, it's gonna Shadow Meld, and if it's not, I'm gonna drink. So this is my Shadow Meld right here, and I'm gonna drink. It didn't doesn't use Shadow Meld right now. You can see I still have Shadow Meld on my action bar, not on cooldown, and I'm drinking away. However, if I'm in combat, which I'm in combat right now, and I drink, it's gonna shadow meld and then start drinking. So that's a pretty good um that's a, that's a pretty good macro if you're a night elf and you find yourself you don't you, you obviously don't want to waste shadow meld if you don't have to. And a more common keyword that I use in my macros is target of target. And that is exactly what it means. It is the target of my target and you can change depending on what kind of target your target is pressing. So that's a lot of targeting. But for example, this is my teammate right here and they are targeting an enemy. This Crackling Jade Lightning will target an enemy. Similar to the Crackling Jade Lightning macro where if my target is targeting the enemy and it'll cast on them, I have the same thing for Zen Sphere too. So if the target 
of my target as an enemy. It'll put sense for on them. It just helps with decision making and making it just faster. This way I don't have to swap from this guy to this guy. I could just press my Zen sphere on my teammate and I never have to detarget at all. That's the that's the beauty of macros. It's just faster. It, it really is just faster. You're trying to make things faster. You make a decision and you want to be able to do it as fast as you can. And that's why I like them so much. If you're a caster, you're probably familiar with this type of keyword, but if you don't, that's great. This is a stop casting. What this does is it will stop you from casting. This helps you juke much quicker. So if I'm Soothing Mist and I press my stop casting macro, it it just stops me from casting instantly. It makes it much easier to juke. And what I do is similar to what we talked about at the start. I try to make it the icon similar to a cooldown I want to track. So um, I do have it showing the Life Cocoon uh, cooldown that I have but it still does my stop casting. I also use Tiger Palm sometimes when I'm doing damage. So I use it to not only you know stop casting, but I use it to track my life cocoon cooldown. If you are a pet class, like a hunter or a death knight or a warlock, you can also macro your pets spells as well. So if you play a hunter, for example, and master's call is given to your pet, you can use it just the same way as your other spells. You can make it so it targets a uh, party or an enemy target if it's, you know, a, a harmful spell. But this is a helpful spell. So this is for Master's Call Party 1, Party 2, and you can use it for yourself or you can just, you know, target yourself and press it. But yeah, you could use your pets as well for macros. I think a really important one for hunters is, or for any kind of pet class, is to have a pet attack in whatever your primary spell is. So, you know, I don't know. I haven't played Demon Warlock in a while, but for Hunters, Kill Command is pretty good. For <laughs> BM Hunter, I'm actually Survival because Survival is the most fun Hunter spec in the game. But you, this will make it so your pet attacks whoever you're attacking. So you could see them dash across from side to side because in the macro, even though I don't, the spell is on cooldown, the, ma the other parts of the macro still work. So that is pretty important. Again, if you're playing any of those specs that rely on pets. Cancel aura macros are very niche, but they're good to have. For example, most high rated players have a cancel aura blessing and protection macro. And the reason for this is pretty much versus mages. This macro is great. So if you're playing with a paladin on your team and you're playing against the mage, you probably want to have a macro for it. So mages can spell steal the bop. You don't want that to happen. You don't want to give them a way to be immune to physical damage. So usually uh, if I'm playing with a rep Halley, They'll bot me and then I'll try to cancel the blessing of protection instantly. You can change the blessing of protection for anything. I can't think of many other spells that you'd want to cancel the aura for. I really, I really can't think of any spells, at least on monk or healing in general. So if anyone has any examples of another cancel aura that they use, would love to know. But for this is the most important one, in my opinion. Just make sure you have a way to get rid of Bop when you're playing against mages. One cool macro that is for if you're playing with the same teammates pretty much every day or consistently is this one right here. So this will auto mark them depending on whichever mark you use and the name that you choose. So all you have to do is do the script set raid target, put the player name and then the world marker that you want to use for them. So four is this one right here would be the triangle right here. So if I use this for myself it should put a triangle over my head and you can change it depending on what class comp whoever whatever they prefer but i like that macro a lot because i don't know i'm lazy and i don't want to put marks on every single person every time i queue finally you can put all these keywords together for example you can have a no mod at target help no dead exists life cocoon macro like myself where this will only put life cocoon on your target if they are a harm a helpful teammate and they exist and they're not dead so for example if you're targeting you know a teammate and they're dead and you press life cocoon they're probably gonna you're gonna life cocoon yourself but if you're targeting a teammate that actually exists that isn't dead or mind controlled though it'll use life cocoon on it so you can combine all of these different types of keywords together really important i mean this is the fun part of macros in my opinion i love macros if you couldn't tell i literally love them so much so if you're ever in a situation where you know you need a very specific macro in certain situations for a certain target try combining a lot of the keywords together and i'm sure you'll be able to do it 
but that is pretty much it. I try to go through most of the common keywords. In the description, I will put a website that shows all the different types of keywords that you can use. I mean, there are uh, over a hundred different types of keywords, which are amazing. And they all have their different situations and uses. If you have any other types of macros that you want to share, please let me know. I love macros so much, but that is it for me. Hopefully this is helpful for anyone who is struggling with macros and wants to learn more about it. And that is it for me. Hope everyone's a fantastic day. Hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you later.